Hi, uh, my name is Wade Harvey uh, with IdealProgrammer.com and ProgressMonitor.com. And uh, today uh, we're going to be talking about putting the pieces of .NET together. And uh, I didn't arrive at uh, how to put the pieces together uh, just by programming or uh, what I did was I have spent uh, several years of watching videos on a regular basis and keeping track of the videos I've watched using Progress Monitor to monitor which videos I've watched. And I, I think it's a powerful tool and I encourage you to uh, take advantage of it. So um, watch videos every day. I recommend an hour a day and uh, it adds up over time. You can do it on your way to work or w whenever you uh, find time to uh, watch a video, but it, it pays off in the long run. You, you'll see how in this uh, series here. So I'm very uh, happy to be able to talk with you and uh, uh, appreciate you taking the time out of your busy schedule to uh, watch this video and I'm going to do the best I can to make it a, uh, the most powerful series that you've ever seen. The first thing we need to look at are what are the obstacles to learning .NET and uh, uh, one thing is that there are a lot of pieces. Uh, it's not just .NET. There's uh, uh, many pieces scattered out across the entire computer and uh, that's what makes it so confusing. This piece is over here and that piece is over there and uh, how do they all fit together? So that's what this series is on showing you we're going to focus on where they are in your computer because I think that can cause uh, causes me a lot of trouble to figure out where this piece of software is. Another problem is that there's a lot of versions of the different uh, software applications and uh, with each of those versions there's a lot of options so it, for a newbie or an oldie there's a lot going on that you have to be aware of. All these different versions, all the different options for each version. It's a lot for one person to handle, unless if they have a big picture of uh, how it all fits together. So that's what we're trying to work on. And uh, we'll try to uh, hurdle the obstacles as we go through this series. Okay, what are the major components of .NET? Uh, well, at the very fundamental level, and that's where we're going to start out, at the bottom level. And we're going to build up one step at a time, one brick at a time, and uh, do it very logically so you'll be able to see how each part fits together. So at the very bottom level is uh, uh, servers. And what is a server? Well, it's a, a servant. It does what you ask it to do, and uh, it's the foundation. Basically, a server uh, just uh, sits there, wait, it's a listener that waits for you to give it commands. When you give it a command, it'll execute those commands for it, and that's it. And level uh, number two uh, component is the net framework itself. Now, the net framework sits between your compiled program and uh, the ones and zeros that your computer executes. So uh, your compiled program is in an intermediate language uh, that uh, is then translated by using the framework into ones and zeros. It's a native language for your particular uh, computer that you're using. And this makes it a lot more efficient because uh, it can be optimized for each computer. That's the uh, just-in-time compiler uh, uh, compiles your uh, work uh, into a native language for uh, the particular operating system that you're using. Third component is security. And uh, security can cause you a lot of problems because there's a lot of different levels. There's file level, there's SQL server level, 
And then there's also uh, ASP.NET level of security. And we'll delve into those different levels and separate them out so that they won't be so confusing for you. Uh, fourth component is uh, monitoring tools. Now, what I'm talking about here are low-level monitoring tools to help you in debugging, figure out uh, who's using this process. Uh, why is uh, SQL Server taking so long to execute this query, and so forth. Uh, the fifth component is a web server. And there's actually two web servers that we're going to look at in particular. There's the, in the, in the development side, when you're in Visual Studio, you're working with uh, something called ASP.NET Development Server. And you need to keep that distinct in your mind from when you're working in production and, and uh, using IIS, which is the Internet Information uh, Services Server. The next thing, next component is uh, the SQL Server. This is confusing because there's uh, so many components to that. It's an animal in itself, and uh, we're expected to know this animal and all these other animals. So I'll try to cover the major parts of SQL Server and show uh, where they reside in your computer. The seventh component are the software development tools that you use to write the software. And to, uh, and here we'll be looking at, in particular, at Visual Studio, uh, at the Express editions uh, uh, of uh, uh, .NET languages, and uh, also at uh, SQL Server uh, development tools uh, like uh, SQL Server Management Studio. And uh, we'll wrap up by looking at the supporting languages for .NET. In addition to knowing .NET and all these other animals, you also have to know uh, several supporting languages.